<clears throat> What's up, YouTube? Wow, start with a throat clearing. Sounds like a great plan. Uh, how's it going? Uh, it is Saturday, December 6th, and uh, tomorrow, officially, I will be one month on tea. Woohoo! Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I just did my fifth shot yesterday. Um, so I'm like four. I'm four weeks, but I'm officially one month tomorrow because months are sometimes not exactly four weeks. So anyways, uh, yeah, one month on tea tomorrow. Yes, good. Uh, I'm finally experiencing some changes, so that's really awesome. Um, I mean, I feel like they're just happening really slowly, and so it's hard for me to notice them. I feel like they've probably been happening, you know, as we go along. But I'm, anyway, I'm like starting to really notice them now. So, uh, change number one, my skin is oilier. Uh, good times. Um, but I really notice it on my face and on like my upper back and shoulders. So that just means, you know, that I have to shower a lot and that's fine. Um, goes with the sort of like increase in smelliness that I talked about last time. So it's fine. I'm fine with it. Uh, I haven't got like bad acne or anything yet. My skin's still pretty, pretty chill. Um, I, you know, wash my face pretty much every morning and I've started to try and like start washing my face at night too which is just you know it is it's hard to like get into a new rhythm um because I've already like brushed my teeth at night so I might as well just wash my face when I do that um but anyway so trying to do that to keep my skin good happy um I'm the other thing I'm excited about I don't think I've talked about this before but I'm excited for this is a weird thing but I'm excited for my hairline to recede a little bit because I'm going to get my hair cut today and uh, I really want to get like a shorter, more masculine haircut, but because my hairline is still very like rounded, um, if I get something cut really short, it looks just like a girl's pixie cut kind of. So I'm excited for that to change so that I can change up my hair a little bit. I might change it up today. We'll see when I go in. Um, so anyways, uh, the skin changes. Um, my libido is up, so that's exciting times for nobody. I mean, maybe me, maybe my girlfriend. Um, but, you know, so that's a thing. Uh, and, let's see, the other thing, my voice is changing a little bit more. Um, I noticed this week for the first time that I'm starting to get that, I thought I was coming down with a cold, because my throat was all kind of, like... Like I was drinking a lot of water and tea because I was like, crap, I'm coming down with a cold. I feel something in my throat. And then I remembered that I had heard and read about trans guys being like, yeah, I got this weird scratchy throat thing before my voice started to drop. So hopefully that's a thing and I'm not actually getting a cold. Um, but that would be about the right time, I suppose. Uh, so I feel like my voice is, okay, I know for a fact that my voice is lower in the morning now than it used to be. Um, like I go into work and I haven't spoken to anybody all morning because like, are you still asleep when I get up? Um, so I go into work and I talk and like the first thing I say in the morning, I'm always like, whoa, my voice is super low. Holy crap. Um, so that's kind of exciting. So like I can definitely tell in the mornings and like when I haven't been talking much that my voice is a little lower. Um, and I think just like my general speaking voice, I'm trying, I'm not, I'm not really trying to speak lower, but I feel like it's sort of lower in my chest now. Um, and Ari can't tell because when she was, she was like, talk normal the other day. And I was like, what, what do you talk normal? And she's like, well, when you talk to me, you're always like, who are you? You know? So like, I'm, it's funny that I'm noticing, uh, my sort of, uh, vocal patterns as this is happening, that I'm noticing that like, I don't know, that I talk to different people in different sort of, uh, parts of my vocal range. So that's kind of interesting to sort of as a sociological note. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so voice, skin, libido, uh, that's pretty much it for now, but it's exciting that I'm one month on tea and I'm actually noticing things. So, okay, uh, the one other thing I wanted to talk about in this video, besides things that are changing, is the experience of, like, finding and losing community, because I had something awesome happen, uh, I was at a work Christmas party, and, um, my friend Dan, uh, we were just talking and he's in, they decided to put together like a little choir at the Christmas party, uh, to sing some Christmas carols and they'd been rehearsing for a couple of days and Dan was like, why aren't you like, this is my first time singing with a choir, but you've sung with choirs before, right? And I was like, yeah, I did in like high school and whatever. And 
And uh, he was like, well, why aren't you singing in the choir this year? And I said, well, my voice is a little wonky. Like, I haven't talked to anybody at work about going on tea or anything. So, like, I didn't really want to go into it. But I was like, my voice is kind of wonky. Maybe I'll do it next year. Um, <clears throat> and he was like, oh, cool. Well, are you a, are you a bass or a baritone or a tenor? And I was like, ah. <laughs> it's, it was just a really cool experience to have somebody just, like, take it for granted that you're a dude and you would sing a dude part. Um, so that was kind of cool. Just the experience of, like, I've always been, like, one of the guys um, with my guy friends, but to just have it, to be, like, um, not exactly read as male, but uh, to be, like, introduced in a situation, like, I went into this new job as male, as Austin, and to just have that be, like, the default, to just have people, like, like, I still get mispronouns sometimes when people aren't paying attention. Like, it still happens sometimes, but, like, their go-to, their default is that I'm male and I use male pronouns and, you know, like, so to just have that, like, um, be the default for people is really cool. And to have, um, I guess when I mean, like, finding community, it's, like, finally being recognized as legitimately one of the guys to be like, yeah, are you a baritone or a tenor? And I'm just like, uh, I'm a tenor, I think. <laughs> I used to sing alto. We'll just have to find out. So, um, I mean, I didn't tell him that I used to sing alto, but anyways, uh, that was just kind of cool to just be accepted in that way. <clears throat> it was kind of exciting. Uh, so, but the other thing I was thinking about this week is the feeling of losing community and like, okay, let me just put it, put it out there and then I can put on my like sort of weird disclaimers. But, um, I, uh, this week, I really got into the web show Carmilla, and if you haven't seen it, fucking watch it. Go to YouTube, type in Carmilla, it's there. Um, but it's a it's a awesome show that has a lot of LGBT characters, um, and I guess there aren't any like guys who are gay, but there's girls who are gay and girls who are bi, probably. We don't know if they haven't said, and uh, one non-binary character, and so it's awesome. Go watch it, but. Um, to be immersed in the fandom of uh, a show that is like a girl with a girl, you know, like in a relationship and um, to feel like I am, <laughs> it's weird, It's this is hard to explain, let me try again. Um, to have been in like fandom communities for so long, like Xena and Buffy and I don't know all these dorky things that are awesome um, that focus on like female female pairings and the sort of like weird obsession that goes along with that uh, I've been part of that for so long and now suddenly I feel like maybe I'm not anymore and it's a weird feeling to like I, I identify as queer um, because I am attracted to lots of different people regardless of their gender or biological sex um, so I still fall within the sort of like queer umbrella, but to not, I don't know. And I never identified as a lesbian because that was just kind of like, I'm not a girl, so that can't be me. Uh, like I was always just really uncomfortable with that word, but being read from the outside as female and gay was like, it automatically put you in this sort of community, right? Um, and to feel like not, like I'm not part of that community anymore because I'm now read as male a lot of the time. And um, it's just a weird feeling. I kind of feel like I'm losing something and I know that I'm not really, um, but it's just weird. I have so many OTPs that are like two girls, women. Um, and like, I have so many feelings about them and to be like, a dude who's into that now feels kind of like a weird outsider position. I don't know how to explain it really, but um, yeah, so being trans in fandom, yeah. Uh, anyway, go watch Carmilla, it's awesome. <laughs> that is the moral of the story. So um, yeah, I guess that's all for now. Um, hit me up if you have any questions about any of this, about changes or or these feelings. Hit me up if you think that, um, if you have any feelings about the sort of like ins and outs of being LGBT and being read in different ways in fandom, because it's fascinating to me, again, in a sort of sociological way. 
So anyways, that's all for now, guys. Um, I will talk to you next week, I suppose. Um, and we'll see if anything else has changed then. And I guess I'll probably have a new haircut. So hope you're having a good weekend. Um, and I will see you later. Bye.